Um, so what I'm going to talk about today, the, the, the talk changed a few names. Um, as, you, as you're putting the talk together, you have a, a concept in mind and, and then something else comes in. And, and I was going to talk about confidence, being, being confident in, in our walk. Um, and then it morphed over into um, being in a relationship with God. Um, and then I have another one here, um, um, God wants a relationship. And it just kept going and going and going. So where are we headed today? The, uh, the thrust of what I want to bring forward is that, that God wants a relationship and it is through the relationship that our faith is, is magnified and, and comes alive. It's through that relationship. That's sort of where I want to, that's all I want to really say today. And, and I'm going to probably shed a, few, a light on a, a few scriptures in doing that. So if you'd like to turn to me to Hebrews 8.10. Colossians. Um, and, and what we're just reading here, 8.10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. So this is talking about after um, the Old Testament. This is talking about the new covenant that um, will be brought in. Um, Saith the Lord that I will put my laws into their mind and write them upon their hearts and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbour and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to the unrighteous, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. And, and, and this is describing what we all partake of now, isn't it? And when, it, when we look at this, it's, it says here for... for well, I will be unto them a God, and they will be unto me a people. There's, there's, in that covenant, that was, that was a wanting to come together. That was a wanting to be in relationship. God, and, and it was very aptly um, spoke about on Friday with Pastor Brad talking about um, God being our Father, our Father who art in heaven. That's that relationship again. So, so we have the God of creation loves his creation. The God of creation loves what he has created, just like you love your children. That's just how it works. Um, and that's what love is. And uh, it, it, it's a beautiful thing. So, so there's a desire to have a relationship. It's just inbuilt in the quality of love. It's just... God is love, and, and where there is love, there will be a desire to, to partake in a relationship in that, in a, uh, with whoever. Um, so, so the wind is blowing us away. So we can just see this relationship there, and God wants to be unto him a God and not unto us a people. So we can see a relationship. And if we go right back to the Garden of Eden, it's a great picture in my mind of that relationship. If we go back to Eden, we, we can see that God created Adam and he didn't want him alone. So, so God communed with him. And I don't know how much that was. And I don't know, yeah, I don't know how long it was for like during the cool of a day, like it was an hour, two hours, like all day. So so God walked with Adam, and I would love to be privy to that conversation. And, and I'm sure God would just re be revealing um, life and himself and, and discussing and, and, and making sense of the world and, and, and the plan and purpose. So I'm guessing there would have been a, a beautiful discussion between Adam and God in the cool, in the garden, walking with God. God. And God still wants that. Circumstances has separated God from, that, from, from our 
literal presence as such, um, like he's not a, a natural being that we can look at and touch and shake his hand. So God is obviously still present, but he doesn't have that closeness that, that you might see um, through Adam. Um, but the desire is still there, but the circumstances have changed a little bit. And when you look at the Garden of Eden, it's, it's a beautiful expectation of what God wants for his creation. And Adam didn't need to pray for healing. Adam didn't need to have to overcome sin. Adam didn't have any of the struggles that we had. That is the environment that, that God that's the environment that God wants for us, is, is that environment. God, God is not a fan of anything contrary to what you see in Eden, basically. So if, if there was sickness in Eden, then, then it would be tolerated. Um, so, so we can see that, that that is that relationship. And that's what you would expect from a father, isn't it? You would expect that a father would cater for every need of a child. No father would let your child suffer. No father would let your child struggle with the difficulty. And if, if they come behind in something, the father wants to, to, to lift up. And, and you, it's a beautiful thing seeing parents um, work with their children who struggle. Well, well, that, that's the same as, as our father who aren't in heaven. It's this relationship, it's the desire to come in to work with and, and, and elevate, lift up, deliver, set free. That's the type of relationship God would like with us. Um, so we can see that relationship ex exists here. Let's go to Hebrews 11 and verse 6. It's interesting when God says that he would be the God of Abraham, the God of Abraham, it's like God is happy to be associated with Abraham. It's not I am God and Abraham is my subject. I am the God of Abraham. It's like I am the God of Christ. I am the God of any of us here. It's just an interesting concept that God really takes ownership. And, and, and I've said it once before and I really love that concept that that, that we are God's responsibility and, it, and he is the God of you and we are his people. Um, Hebrews 11.6, we read, um, I've, covered, I've talked about this previously, I, I love it. There's scriptures I just really love, this is one of them. For without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, so, so faith is necessary in that relationship. So, so God, God exists and he is a loving father and it requires that, that we would know that. He requires that you would understand and know his love, that he's not a stranger in any way. Um, and it is, it is through faith that we have that confidence in that relationship. So faith is the confidence um, in God, in his integrity, in his word, um, in his promises. And without faith, it's, it's difficult, we see here, to please God. It's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Um, must believe that he is. Who, what do you think that means? I know um, in my mind when I think that you must believe that he is, and you might be that he is all in all, that he is the God of creation, that he is the supreme creator. But when you, when you start breaking it down into God is, um, it comes back to a, a scripture that our brother spoke about on um, oh, yesterday about the Lord is, the name of the Lord is the strong tower that we run into for refuge. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and, and God is 
And if we look at the names of God, and, and it sort of indicates who he is. God reveals who he is by his names. And the name of the Lord is something that we can run into, and there is that um, deliverance. And if you quickly go through the names of the Lord, there's quite a few. Um, he gave them to himself, and it's Jehovah Nissi, the Lord my banner or my victory, Raha, the Lord my shepherd, Rapha, the Lord my helper, Shema, the Lord is here, the Lord is present, Sekenu, the Lord our righteousness, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will supply, and Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. So when you look at that, you must believe that he is. That's what he is. So if you want to believe what God is, then we know what he is because he's identified. That is the character of God. That is, the, that is his um, disclosing his intention, his relationship, his role as a father is through the names that he gave himself to identify, to make it clear that we would know him, that we could have um, an understanding of how God thinks, how he works, and his plan and purpose. So, so that we must believe that he is, and, and these are the things. So we can choose to, to believe that he is those things. And he is a rewarder. Not that you're earning anything. He is a deliverer of those that, that come to him, that commune with him, that, that are in that relationship. He is a rewarder of those that diligently um, spend time with the Lord and build their relationship. It's, it's rewarded through providing all of our needs. And... There is a requirement on us that we would spend time to know our Father because in him there's a, lot of, there's a lot of joy and there's a lot of blessing in knowing him. But it does take a bit of effort. So it says that he that will reward of them that diligently seek him. So God is never wanting to withhold is what I'm reading there then if we can believe in God as our provider, if we can believe God as our provider, then you will be rewarded in provision. And, and the idea was that, that the anxiety of life where you feel the need to meet your needs and to... Um, um, you're worried about our future and our circumstances and our jobs and money and retirement and, and health and all these things. God doesn't want you bound in those things. They exist. It's a part of life. But, but that's, not, that's not the Garden of Eden. That's not the relationship. So, so God has made provision for us that we would walk upon this earth that we would be unto him a people, we become his responsibility where he cares and he has a desire to step into our lives to work with us. So, so without faith it is possible to please him. And, and as Pastor Brad brought forth on um, Friday night, um, he was just making clear that Faith is this thing that requires a little bit of effort. And, and, and encouragement was that where the word of God is, there will be, there will be faith. So, so where you get to share and, and read and commune through the word, there will be faith. And, and, and it was very clearly articulated that... that by coming around the word, by spending time in it, by being in fellowship, your faith is made alive. It's quickened. We go from faith to faith 
um, Romans re- talks about. So, so we are spirit-filled. You have been granted the ability to walk and to believe and to stand, and your faith will continue to grow and magnify um, as, as, we, as we seek to be in that relationship, as we grow close to the Lord, that faith comes. And as I was talking yesterday, in my mind, a lot of, a lot of the faith, a lot of my faith comes from understanding the integrity of, of, of God, to understanding his integrity and understanding that as a father, I know what I'm like as a father. I know my integrity and I'm, I, I'm okay, I, I have some flaws and I'm not, I didn't do the best job in raising my children. I did the best I could. Um, but I, I envisage God's integrity would be one of, of absolute pureness. That if, if my father says something unto me, I believe it to be true. Because that's his integrity. And, and I think God prides himself in that his yea is his yea and a nay is a nay. And as he said, and will he not do it? I think he prides himself in his um, commitment that he, that he, it remains the same. He's the same yesterday forever. The goalposts don't move. That his love and his commitment for us remains. So, so we have that confidence in him because of his integrity. And to me, I think that we all, as we come together in prayer, when we, when we seek the Lord in our prayer and in our needs, knowing that he is the Father, and, and what Pastor Brad said was beautiful and it is so true, if you understand that he is a Father, there is no desire in him that you would be sick. There is nothing in him that he would want you to suffer, to be caught up in addictions and problems and difficulties. That is never his intention. And he has made provision for us that he can deliver his child from all things, from every single thing. He has made that commitment as a father to do that if we can just stand in faith, if we can just believe that he is, he will. So, so I find that encouraging to know that, that God's integrity is intact and we had that track record of, of his dealings throughout history with mankind. It, 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 it's obvious that 2021, now it's God dealing in 2021. The word hasn't changed. The power hasn't changed. His integrity hasn't changed. Have we changed? Will we change? Do we wax cold? Does it get too hard? Is it, is it, is it all too hard? And, and, and what I thought in the past is that I know what really limits my ability to me, what really crushes my ability to be, believe is when for some reason I have prayed and it doesn't seem to come to pass, then then in my mind I go to make an excuse for God. And what I decided to do a little while ago, I refuse to make an excuse for God ever ever again. If there's a problem, it will be me. It will never be God. So that was the first thing I did, was refuse to make an excuse. But when things don't go wrong, it's quite easily. We we need to rationalise that as human beings. We need to make sense of that. The word says this, and, and I expect that, and it didn't happen, so therefore, I don't know, it doesn't work, I give up, I'll just keep on coming along because I know I have my salvation. And, and you've, you've, you've settled into an area where the hand of God no longer is able to work. If for some reason 
when I pray, nothing comes to pass. I believe in the word of God. I continue to stand upon that promise. And it talks about um, in Hebrews 6.12, let's quickly go there, since it's on my mind. So be not slothful, followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So it talks about just previously that um, the Lord is not unrighteous to forget the works that you do, the love that you have shown, your labour of love, and that, um, that we would show the same diligence to, right to the end, um, and that we would know that, that through faith and patience we inherit the promises. So, so if something doesn't come about, I still believe that what the Word of God said is true, and I will never stop doing that, even if I die with that problem. The Word of God is true, and that is the truth and his promise unto me. And sometimes I just need to sit, and, and as Pastor Brad said, we need to just get about the Lord's business and just be in patience. Patience is a powerful thing because patience, it's not patience without faith though. You're just not waiting. I don't know if it's going to happen. I'm just going to wait. That's not the patience. The patience is the word has declared my father does not want me sick and he has healed. On the cross it was finished all Everything that exalts, him, exalts above the, the name of the Lord has been put down. Anything that stands against God or his son Jesus was put down at the cross. It was finished. So, so I know that there is nothing that can come that, that is too big for God. I know that that is the promise of God, what is written here. And I will just continue to stand in that promise. And, and I will not stand in patience without faith or vice versa. So, so I just apply patience to it and I just keep believing because God is true who has promised. And that is his glory. To those that believe the glory is manifest and as we can, can trust in God's integrity, his glory is magnified upon this earth. And, and that's, that was the beauty of Lazarus. When, when Lazarus was risen, if you would believe, you would see the glory of the Lord. And everything wants to attack that, a belief. Everything wants to attack your ability to go, as the Lord has said, I will believe. And as, as mentioned yesterday, we come up making excuses sometimes. And, and we all know those excuses, you know, maybe God's trying to teach me something through sickness. You will learn something through sickness, but it's not God who's trying to teach you something. It will automatically bring out some learning in you. Um, or you could think that, yeah, I don't have enough faith, or I don't know if it's God's will for me, or yeah, maybe it's not important. There's all these reasons that you could come up with as to why the power of God does not flow. And you can think of healings, you can think of provision, you can think of a job, you can think of any conceivable, any, con thing, any conceivable thing as to why. And you can come up with an excuse. And I think that, that whatever excuse that you come up with will be the reason why you don't uh, receive that blessing or that power or that um, miracle. Whatever, whatever excuse that you can come up with, then that will be the reason that we don't receive from the Lord. There is no need for an excuse. We stand and we believe because God is true. And just keep going back to that concept of a father, his integrity, he does not lie. And the scriptures scream that to us. 
when you jump through the scriptures and you can see uh, through Hebrews, crazy, crazy um, commitment we see to God's integrity and his commitment and his love to us. So, so God desires to work with us. And he doesn't want us trying to spend all your time trying to make God do things. So, so God doesn't want you caught up in your life working out how can I get God to do this? How can I get God to do that, heal that, make that? You know, so, so we can get caught up, and I've been caught up in it, where you try and work out what I need to do to, to force God's hand as such. And I, 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 I don't think that's the way we do it. God wants blessing in your life because he has a plan to save the world. God loves his creation. So, so, so God wants you to know his love and you need to know it because without it, it's difficult to understand the Father. So, so God wants you to know his love because he loves his creation and he also wants to save his creation, just like you want to save your children. It, it's, it's just in you. That's what you want to do. Well, God's plan is bigger than your world. And, and, and God doesn't want you to be floundering with his love and his commitment and in his, in his promises and, and, and healing you and, and meeting your every need. He doesn't want you anxious for life. Far out. That, you know, that, that, that's fundamental stuff. God desires that, that, that you would just have that confidence that God's got my life sorted I am in his hand and nothing can ever take, it, take, you, take us away from him. So that we can know that love and then start sharing that love. Ultimately, God's plan is that he loves his creation and he wants to draw it back unto himself. He doesn't override us. He doesn't step into this world and do it without us. So through circumstances, through sin, um, we chose to be the rules of our own life and our own destiny, destiny and, and God no longer walked and talked with us in the cool of the evening. But we go back to Eden now in our relationship with the Lord where, where he is able to commune with us through his word, through prayer and through all these things. And that we would understand his plan. And his plan is and his plan is life to this world. And not that you would be caught up in, in all these difficulties. Um, there's a few scriptures I really wanted to cover. Um, that's my wrap-up time. In uh, 2 Peter 1, this was what I wanted to talk about. This was all the preamble. 2 Peter. 2 Peter 1, 1. Um, I won't read from 1, 1 because of time. Let's go to verse 3. According as his divine power have given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. I want you to take that as, as literal. I don't want you to rationalise that out as He's given me a few things and I don't really have God's complete commitment to me. He's given me some things, but he's given us all things that pertain to life, eternal life. There is nothing to stop you in your eternal, as an eternal being. He's given you all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him who have called us to glory and virtue. Through Jesus Christ. It was through Jesus Christ that this all has been manifest. And it's through the knowledge of him, this is that knowledge, getting to know, to understand, to, to, to be in that relationship, who has called us to glory and virtue. And virtue is moral 
moral excellence. It's being someone of moral character. There is a desire that, that you would take up. God is of moral character and is of virtue. And it is a desire that his children would also um, have that. And it's interesting that, that as virtue, moral, being a good person, it really, it really flourishes in the relationship with the Lord. And just quickly, it's something that um, I noticed when I was reading about Adam and Eve. When Adam and Eve sinned or took at the tree, the first thing they did when they did wrong was to hide themselves. God had to look at them. Where are you? They hid. So, so sin and, and things that we do wrong, we're human, we're going to do them, but it just has that impact upon us that we want to segregate, separate, move away. We're not sure if we can really believe because no sin's that insidious thing. But don't allow that to rob you of the promises. Don't let it hide you away. Come before the throne of grace and, and believe. So he's called us to virtue, and virtue is a beautiful thing because it just flourishes a good relationship with the Lord. Um, and we're not going to be perfect. You will fall, and it will hurt a little bit, but that's okay. God raises us up, and our sins he forgives and um, cleanses us from. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of a divine nature. You are given... You are given exceeding and great promises. And it is through these that you become partakers of who God is, his divine nature. God's nature is one of restoration, healing, deliverance. That is his nature. He is, stands for light and love. And this is his nature. And, and we can see that through these promises... All these promises, we're partaking in this uh, nature of God, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Um, and there's many other scriptures that um, talk about the promises, the integrity of God, the power of God as such. Um, if we could just go to one last scripture, John 14. John 14. This is my closing scripture that I always use. John 14, 12. Confidence comes through that relationship with the Lord, spending time, and it takes that effort. It's not, gonna, it's not something flippant, as Pastor Brad was alluding to on Friday night. That relationship, it does take a little bit of effort. You need to work with your spouse to build your relationship. You need to work with your children to build a relationship. You need to work with the Lord to build that relationship. It's, it's just no different. There's a little bit required that you may develop a relationship and that faith may flourish and that confidence in the Lord may flourish. Because... Truly, truly, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also and greater works than these because I go to the Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to do what you require because his Father is glorified. So he's not doing it. Well, well it's because you're asking, obviously. But it's talking about that, that whatever you will ask, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son, that there would be the glorifying of God, that the power of God, the divine nature, the, the, the expression of God is being manifest on the earth. It brings, it brings the beauty of God onto the earth. So, so, so we have these great and precious promises. Um, we have a relationship that we can work and build and, and, and enjoy that confidence that we, we can lay hands on the sick, we can be delivered, we can take a gospel forward of love because we've experienced that love. 
And if, it, and if it's something that you're not familiar with, then, then that's that conversation. What are you talking about, Lord? Um, and, and, and build that relationship. Because the works that, that, that Jesus did, will we do also, and greater works. And gra- the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater. Shall he do. Look at the word shall. It, it's not... It's not a maybe. The things that Jesus did, he has given us his power that we would, we would take on the love that he had for ourselves and for creation itself. So it's, it's getting beyond ourselves because is, is, he is beyond himself. He wants, he's trying to extend love out into the world. So we need to understand God's love, God's love for us, trust in God's integrity Believe his word, know that his, our life is in control. And there's a job to do that, that he has in, in delivering of the gospel to, to, to bring light, love to, to this world, to, to other people. So it's pretty big, it's pretty beautiful, um, and I, I hope that's encouraging. Um, there's a lot of thoughts that could be expounded on, uh, but for the sake of time, I think that should be beside. Um, enough. So I will just say amen there and hand over.